A hundred percent. I mean, I feel I'm a type of fighter that trains a lot and literally work my, my whole ass off in the camp. So, uh, yeah, I was ready for this fight and I feel like give a hundred percent to go in there and feel a hundred percent confident. You've had a lot of success in the especially Well, uh, of course, I had to adjust in the middle of the, of the fight. My corners kind of helped me. And uh, whoever knows Kings MMA uh, clinches something, a signature. So uh, definitely we trained that at Kings. But uh, they were the ones who kind of guide me as well and make those adjustments to put the work in. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm I'm a fighter that loves blood, you know, I love to fight. I love those type of fights. Of fights. Uh, of course, you want to get the victory always. Um, one way or another, with blood or without blood, I'm always trying to uh, achieve the victory. And uh, But I'm, I'm pretty confident, you know, I put the work in to, to get the victory and I, I saw the fight uh, at the end as uh, my victory. So, you know, the weight cut seemed kind of tough. Did it take an effect on you? It feels kind of like a vertical spring today. How bad or how good? Um, I feel it didn't affect the fight itself. I know it was a little bit unprofessional for myself to take that extra hour, but I still made weight, you know. Uh, but it's something I, I'm going to work on, you know, and try to make weight the, the times it's supposed to be and try to be more professional. But no, I didn't feel it affected at all. I recovered pretty good. Um, I just had a little bit of complications on the last 0.2 pounds, but uh, finally we, we made it with uh, the help of everyone. Last question. Did JJ have anything to work for you that you expected? Was she stronger? Uh, I knew she was a, a really strong fighter, you know, it didn't surprise me, but uh, a fight is a fight, you know, and I had a plan, for example, in the first round, it didn't went through, but it's just adjustments. I feel she's a great fighter, and uh, nothing that surprised me, but of course I knew she, how tough she was, and uh, of course she showed it over there. Sabina, you're obviously known for your head kick knockouts. In the second round, you almost caught her. Were you hoping that, you know what, I'm about to get another one finally in the UFC in that moment? Uh, yes, of course. Of course, I didn't saw she was uh, that bad after the kick, but it was something in my, in my it's something in my game. You know, it's something I for sure I want to put in my opponents. But um, I, I was trying to to get that in second round. You were previously scheduled to fight on the Korea card at the end of last year. Obviously, you know you got moved this one. How's the adjustment? You know, obviously preparing and then having to stay in camp throughout the holidays. It just motivated me more, you know. I, I knew the car that I was it was waiting for me, and uh, for me it was like the beginning of the year. So um, it just moved just a couple of weeks, you know, with the with the nutrition. But uh, I'm a type of fighter that don't do like a fight camp. I like to train all the time. So uh, for me, as soon as I I get back home, that it's four hours away, so I'll be back to train normal. So yeah, it's just adjustment of, of nutrition, but training keeps the same. I know this fight is obviously still very fresh, but you told Joe Rogan you want this year to be the year that people know you. Do you have someone you want to call out and someone who could be next to help propel you forward? Anyone that it's available, I will take it. I don't I don't like to call anyone because I want to make my way there. And uh, for me, anyone that is in the list is, is part of my, it's part of my way, so I'll take anyone.